Hi, everyone. Welcome and thank you for joining in this episode of Heyo's Talks, Talks that focuses on helping each other succeed. My name is Hetal Patel, and I'm going to be your host for today's episode of Heyo's Talks. I'm excited and honored to have a chat with one of the most well-known and successful and inspiring leaders in the field of medical affairs and pharmaceutical industry. His name is Tom Caravella. He has been a true beacon of inspiration his dedication to helping others succeed in their careers within the medical affairs field is truly commendable. Tom's influential and wildly successful podcast, MSL Talks, has become a cornerstone for both professionals and enthusiasts alike. The talk provides valuable insights into the complex and fascinating world of medical affairs. So please join me in welcoming Tom Caravella to this episode of Heyo's Talks. Tom, Welcome to Heyo Talk. Thank you so much for joining this episode. I am very excited and honored to be working alongside you and having a chat with you and learning more about your journey. Awesome. Well, thank you, Hito. I appreciate that amazing introduction. Um, that was awesome. And I'm honored. I'm actually honored to be here and I'm honored to be doing this with you. So uh, my name is Tom Caravella and I am the founder and owner of the Carolyn Group, which is an executive search firm. And we specialize in medical affairs and MSL recruitment. We help build MSL teams for our clients. Um, and then, as Hedel mentioned, I also have a podcast called MSL Talk. Um, and we also have a coaching program for MSLs and aspiring MSLs uh, to help them land their first role. It's called MSL Mastery. So we have a lot going on in my world, um, and I'm really grateful for the opportunity to be here. That's amazing, and Tom. Your podcast, MSL Talks, it serves such, a, such an important resource for so many who are aspiring to become MSLs or even looking to hone their skills. Can you tell us a little bit about what ignites your passion for helping others in their career? You know, I'll tell you, Hita, what, what, there's nothing better than getting that phone call from your candidate and learning that they just landed their dream job. Like as much as I love the fact that that's what we get paid to do and our clients pay us to do that, the reward for me is seeing the success and the joy that comes from helping somebody land their dream job. It was part of the inspiration for, or probably the main inspiration for the podcast. And it was a way to help people on a broader scale as opposed to just one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, and truly your inspiration and your passion shows in everything you do. I have listened to almost every single episode of your MSL talk. So your passion and your, your dedication to actually help truly shows in every single thing you do. Thank you. Now, Tom, I'm sure when you started, you did not expect that your podcast and your own uh, recruitment career trajectory would be so overwhelmingly successful. What was the inspiration behind starting this podcast? Well, you know, the podcast actually came to me as an idea from someone else. Um, I actually had a conversation with uh, my marketing coach at the time, and he kind of tapped me on the shoulder and said, you know, you really need to have a podcast, which got me thinking. And I, I mean, I, I don't know, I kind of always wanted to have my own talk show. And I, I thought that having a podcast would be a great platform for taking content and having the ability to reach more people. Again, like I said before, instead of me just helping one person at a time, I can help multiple people. So I love the idea of coaching, but being able to coach on a broad scale is really the concept behind the podcast. And that was the inspiration behind it as well. That's great. That's wonderful. So your marketing coach kind of provided you, or marketing person provided you the nudge that you needed to get started on this podcast. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Was there any defining moment or inspirational event that impacted throughout your career progression or your trajectory? Being in business, you go through a lot of ups and downs. Um, but pivotal moments, if I, if I had to go back and think it, and going back to the beginning, one thing that jumps out at me is a story when, when I first started my business, 
Um, my first client and my only client at the time was Bristol Myers Squibb. So I went to visit one of my key contacts, probably the only contact at the time. And she introduced me to her boss, who was the head of talent acquisition. Her name was Marianne. And we just hit it off. Marianne and I really hit it off. And she, Marianne said to me after our conversations, she said, hey, take a walk with me. And she walked me through the talent acquisition department and introduced me to every single person in the department and said, Tom's a new recruiter with us. He's going to be the guy that we go to when we need help on our searches. And gave me this tremendous endorsement. And from that point, it totally changed the trajectory of where I was going because I had all these new clients within one client that were now giving us work. And I'll never forget, and it just goes to show you how important relationships are. She and I just really hit it off and she wanted to help me. And it made a huge difference in the course of my business and my career. That is very inspiring. And it's kind of like what you're doing is move it forward, right? She helped you and now you are taking the same path and you are helping others in expanding their career. It's really, really commendable. I also want to now Thank switch you. gears a little bit and talk about uh, some of the adversity. Like, you know, I'm sure during your career trajectory, not everything was uh, good. There must be peaks and troughs in your career. They do say that adversity is a true test of character. Do you recall a time when your resilience was put to test? And how have you turned that particular situation in a learning curve for you and then the others around you? You know, again, you know, there's so many ups and downs in business and it's very difficult. But I, I could tell you probably the one thing that stands out is 9-11. Mm -hmm. So when 9-11 hit, um, that was actually before I started my business. I was working as a recruiter for another company. And we focused on um, Wall Street financial firms and helping them with their IT and software and building out systems for these guys. And when 9-11 hit, two things happened. I lost my cousin. My cousin worked for Cantor Fitzgerald. We were very, very close. So personally, I was affected. And then professionally, after 9-11, the whole financial world collapsed. So now my business, you know, the, the, the professional side was at, in a really bad place. And personally, I was in a really bad place. And for about six months, I really had a difficult time figuring out what I was going to do to try to recover from that setback. And you know what happened is I started my business right after that. I was like, you know what? If I'm going to go all in on something, I'm going to do it for myself. So instead of trying to rebuild something for somebody else, I took what I learned from the, from, the, from the recruiting industry and applied it to the pharmaceutical industry. And I started my own firm right after that. That is truly inspiring, Tom. And yes, definitely your resilience was put to test. We all can relate to all the personal tragedies that some have faced at one level or the other at 9-11. But the way you took that and came out of it and made it as your strong point is truly commendable. Thank you. Now, Tom, on the same line, you know, besides the adversity, everybody still loves to listen or hear about a rags to riches story. Is there a particular success story that you probably have heard during your uh, numerous podcast episodes either, or for yourself too, that one particular story that stands out to you that you would like to share with us? Yeah, and there's there's quite a few. Thankfully, we've had a lot of success and we've helped a lot of people. But I think what stands out most to me is um, my recruiter, Sarah, Sarah Snyder, who works with me. Um, it's an amazing story. So Sarah was an MSL and she was in medical affairs for 20 years at a very high level. She was a, like a director level MSL. And she had gotten laid off and she reached out to me and said, hey, listen, I, I just went through a layoff and I want to see if you can help me. 
So she sent me her CV and I asked her what she wanted to do. And she said that she didn't think she wanted to be an MSL anymore. Her kids and the schedules and, and not being able to travel as much as she really wanted to um, made her think that she was destined to do something else. And I said to her, I'm like, well, did you ever think about being a recruiter? And there was kind of a long pause and she thought about it. And long story short, we talked about it and worked through the whole process of making the transition. And she's been with me for almost two years now. And she's like breaking records. She is so amazing at what she does. She's renowned in the medical affairs industry. Everybody knows who she is. Everybody wants to work with Sarah. She and I just started a coaching program that's doing really amazing things for aspiring MSLs and MSLs. And it just goes to show you that she went from being unemployed, not knowing what she wanted to do, taking a chance, starting from zero, and she's made herself a tremendous success. Yes, Sarah is amazing. But it also speaks volumes about you, Tom, that when she came to you, you were able to recognize the key skills in her that you think probably would have made her a good recruiter. So kudos to you too. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. So on that line, you know, besides Sarah, you have guided so many other people in their career journey, whether they are just starting off or they're in the mid-level of their professional career. So in your experience, what qualities or skills do you think are essential for someone who's looking to succeed in their chosen career path? You know, the first thing that comes into mind for me is, is you have to be a hard worker. You know, there's an expression, hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. So you could be the most talented person in the world, but if you're not a hard worker, you're going to get beat out by somebody else who is. So that's like, that's the number one thing that I think is really important. The number two thing is discipline. And discipline is, the, my definition of discipline is just forcing yourself to do things that you don't want to do on a consistent and daily basis. So if you have somebody who's a hard worker and is disciplined and is forcing themselves to do things every day that maybe others won't, you then become an unstoppable force. And then the third thing that I would say is attention to detail. I think one of the things I see that lacks right now is that people just go through the motions and they're not truly locked into the details. And that's where mistakes happen. And that's where you get beat out by somebody else who's really locked into the details. I'm, I'm a sports guy, so everything is like a sports analogy. And it's like, there's a winner and there's a loser. Which one do you want to be? Well, if you're a hard worker, if you're disciplined, and if you have a really strong attention to detail, you're going to win. Yes, very, very well said. And so true, Tom. I, I feel not only in medical affairs, but in any field you take a look at it. Besides hard work, if you do pay attention to detail, every single detail, and your diligence and consistency in hard work will eventually definitely will pay off. So thank you. Thank you for that guidance. On the same line, if uh, you know your niche is in medical affairs, so many people across the globe look up to you and your podcast as they're trying to break into their first MSL role or they are looking for a career advancement. Any um, people that who look up to you to aspire or to make a mark or influence in the medical affairs domain, what guiding principles would you like to share who would like to achieve their own uh, success or carve their own path? Yeah, well, I think one of the things that's important is you have to find, people need to find what their, what I call your unique value proposition, your UVP. What makes you valuable? What makes you special? What transferable skills do you, do you have that are going to make you attractive to a potential employer? Everybody has something that they're really good at. There's something that maybe they're really, that makes them special. Maybe they're an expert in oncology or, or neuroscience, or maybe they're a really good presenter. There's, there's transferable skills. There's specialized expertise. You need to leverage that. And that needs to come out 
front and center on your resume and in every communication so that people realize, wow, we need to have this person because they're so valuable. So find your unique value proposition and leverage it. I like that. I really like that UVP. I'm going to use that uh, terminology. Thank you, Tom. But so true. You know, everybody comes with their own strengths, their own weaknesses. It's up to you to find your own uniqueness from which you can carve your own path. So thank you for that advice, Tom. Besides that, could you share three key insights into the most common mistakes or misconceptions that people have when they are doing either their job search or they're looking for pivoting in their career and how they can overcome them? Yeah, well, I could tell you right now, and, and there's probably 10 of them that I could share, but I'll stick to just three that come into my mind. The first thing is the misconception that all you need to do is go out and do a Google search and then apply to a million positions and you're just going to get a job. That's a terrible strategy. And that's what most people do, but it's a terrible strategy. So that's the first misconception. The second misconception is that there's a quick fix and there's some type of instant gratification that you're going to get. Oh, I need a job. Okay, I'll have a job in a week or two weeks. Um, the job search process, especially now, is a marathon. It's not a sprint. So I think people need to understand that they need to follow a process and take one day at a time and not think it's just gonna happen overnight. And then the, the third thing, which kind of goes hand in hand with all this, is that people need to embrace failure. People look at failure like it's a bad thing. And there's an expression that I love, and it's, I don't even remember who said it, but fail fast and fail forward. And look at it this way. Just imagine that your job search is a deck of cards. Well, there's 52 cards in every deck, but there's only four aces. So you might have to turn over a lot of cards before you get to the ace. And maybe that ace is the interview. And you might have to have four interviews before you land a job. But the idea is that if you embrace failure, as you're turning over those cards, every time you turn over another card, every time you go through another failure, you're getting closer to your dream job. You're getting closer to success. So embrace failure, get through the process, and you'll eventually wind up getting your dream job. I love the analogy, uh, Tom, with a deck of cards. The way you explain that there are only four aces and you have to work through that, embrace failure till you get to the aces, really makes sense. And I also like how this answer actually ties through all that you've discussed in the last few minutes. You yourself had started a few years ago uh, through your own dedication, uh, through your own resilience, and through your own failures and your peaks and troughs in your career trajectory. You are here right now at this position where uh, you inspire others, you motivate others. So it truly makes sense, thank you. Lastly, I wanted to ask you is, what do you think about um, the inspiration and in our mission of Chaos Talks here on trying to inspire others to do more, to be more and to live more? I love it. I think this is such a great idea that Ravi came up with. I'm glad that I'm a part of it. And I think that each one of us is blessed with some type of skill, something that we can utilize to help others. And I think that it's our obligation and our responsibility to use our unique skills to, to be supportive, um, and try to help others succeed in areas where maybe they don't have that same skill. Or maybe it's just in a relationship that we can share, a favor that we can do, an introduction that we can make. It could be something very subtle, but I think that if we all can just take a little bit of time to help others succeed, it's gonna gra give us gratification, obviously, and you know we're gonna wind up making the world a better place. Thank you very much, Tom, for joining us today uh, on this episode of Chaos Talks and sharing your incredible journey and insights with us. As always, I learned so much from you and every time I leave inspired from you. Well, thank you, Hedel. I 
truly enjoyed this opportunity. You were an amazing host. And uh, we sh you should now come on my podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I would love that opportunity, Tom. Thank you. And to our audience, thank you for joining us on this conversation today with a leader who truly believes in nurturing other people's careers and giving back. And by doing so, his leadership has touched the lives of so many professionals around the globe, and he has truly become a beacon of inspiration. Until next time, let's all get inspired to be more, do more, and live more. If you can be an inspiration to others, or you want someone to interview who inspired you, reach out to us or join us in this mission to help others. Thank you for watching today's episode of Heyo's Talks. See you in the next episode.